everybody. I hope you are having a great weekend. We wanted to go over with you the things that are going on here. Uh, we're gonna do a small tour to show you uh, the things that we showed you before, see how they're coming along. And I wanted to go over um, the compost with you. I uh, did the compost again and it's in the three stages, so I wanted to show that to you and show you what's been developing in the house this week. So, one of the things I did early this morning, we're reaching at 100 degrees uh, right now, so anything that we do either has to be later in the evening or early in the morning because there's just too much stress uh, during the day, it's just too hot. So, the zucchini plants, as I told you, were not getting germinated. And a part of that is because the leaves tend to cover the flowers so the bees don't always see the flowers and also sometimes there's just other things that they're pollinating and they're not getting busy so you need to do the work for them so we have a little video on um, how that was done and then I had told you I was going to be growing these vertical well they have gotten tall enough now that I was able to I'm gonna have Candace come over to this one it'll show you better how I was able to tie this to this stem here. And you see where it had started down here with the flowers? Okay, so now those are going. Now there's going to start being flowers on this one. And once those are done, the leaves will be bigger here and there'll be more flowers here. So as it goes and progresses, we'll just keep tying the, cold, the, the main stem to this stake so it can grow vertically instead of sprawling all over the ground. Because as you can see, these leaves are just, they're beautiful, but they're humongous. Um, so uh, we'll just go up on that. The, I'm not sure the last time I showed you the sunflower, but as you can see, the Titan has gotten pretty tall. And then we have the smaller ones next to him. And the beans, look at you guys. Look at all the flowers on these beans. He's going to be producing a lot of beans. I did one small harvest already on the beans, uh, but he'll have a lot more coming. There's little babies in here. Oh, here's one right here. Look. Yay! <laughs> we have food. Okay, so that's the beans. Want some, Candace? Yeah. Mm. So good. So that was one of the yellows. This is the, the green zucchini. Candace, can you see that little zucchini on there? Okay. And then here's another yellow crook neck. Now this one I gotta keep an eye on because he's kind of odd shaped. So I'm not sure if he got germinated or not, but we'll have to find out. I think he did because he keeps growing. And here's some more of our beans back here. This is the royal burgundy back here. I don't know if we have any babies or preferably bigger ones, but I'll just pick this little guy just so you can see what he looks like. So this is the Royal Burgundy. He's purple and he's just got great flavor. I got these from um, Rare Seeds. Our apple trees. Look at our apples, you guys. They're just everywhere. This is the Anna apple. And we did thin it out. So because this is only its second year in the ground, we didn't want it stressing out too much. Um, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful apples. And then over here is the door set. We have some over here. And look at this one. Look at this bundle. Isn't that crazy? They're just beautiful. There's four of them on there. Okay. So then if we go back to the garden. Sorry, I got distracted by the apple tree. So back in here we have another sunflower. And then here's another one of our beans. And then next to the beans I had put a lemon cucumber. And it's crawling this way. And then not thinking about how much they were gonna vine, I put in an Armenian cucumber, which the vines are crazy on that one also. 
So I put up these two block wall, uh, they're, they're called block wall something. Anyway, I use them as trellises and I'm going, you, you find them over by the cement and uh, the blocks and all of that at Home Depot. And you can just use it as a trellis for your vining plants. It works very well. Uh, the, the smaller ones tend to have more sturdiness to them than the bigger ones. They just, they're a little bit too big and they get wobbly. This here is a China Jade Cucumber. We have taken two, uh, I thought that was a, I thought that was a caterpillar. We've taken two cucumbers off of here already. They're very good. Um, we totally took down the nasturtium. I'm thinking it might have been a little bit too much for him because now the sun is directly hitting all of those parts that were shaded. I'm not sure if he's going to come back or not because they are more of a cool season. So he might die off, but if he does, I can guarantee you it's going to come back again in the fall because this thing has dropped so many seeds in this area that I know I haven't found, it will probably reseed itself forever. Carrots, I was going to do a harvest on these. I will probably do it later this afternoon. Let's see if we can find. Oh, look at that, you guys. Look at the color of that carrot. Isn't that amazing? So I don't want to pull them right now because, because it's so hot outside. Oh, you did, let me try it. Oh, you want to try it? Yeah. You know, before I started doing this, Candace would never have done this. But we we garden organically. Actually, it's since COVID. Yes, yeah, since COVID. Yeah, I'm like, give me... Yeah. So we just... Get my immune you know, system stronger. Build up that immune system with a little bit of dirt. How's that? Good. Good? Awesome. So we'll harvest these. It and has a little have those for lime dinner. quad taste to it. Does it really? A little bit. Let me see. Mmm. So good. So different from the store. Here's another China Jade. These are long slicers. They get like this long. And you want to try to grow them on a trellis because if you don't, I had this one down here before and I just recently put it up on the trellis, it was like curling around. But if you have it on a trellis, they'll grow straight down. And these are great slicing tomatoes. So you can see we have a little baby right here growing. There's another baby here. These are self-pollinating, so you don't have to worry about the bees getting to them. Um, there's another baby. There's babies all over this little guy. So that's what we have going on in our main raised bed. Then I harvested um, spearmint. I have that in the house to show you. And this guy was dying. Huh, he doesn't look so good right now, but he'll come back. I cut this off of the main yellow pear that we have and I stuck him in the ground. I'm gonna see if he comes back to life. <laughs> look at this, you guys. Remember I told you, I don't know what this is, but it's so it did its own thing and it it was a volunteer. No, I don't know if you can see in here. You can see that. Oh, here's a bigger one. Look at that. Wow, we got melons. I'm not sure what kind of melons these are yet, but we will find out. But there's a ton of melons in there. And they absolutely love being under this tree. So I'm thinking that's going to be great ground cover. And here are the apricots. We've picked a couple off of here. They are just, they're so good. Um, we think about another two weeks and they will be absolutely ready to go. They're not quite, when you, when you just this squeeze one's ready. them softly. Oh, that's why. Oh, yep. Yeah. So this is another thing we're doing this afternoon. Look at that. The bees, or not the bees, but the, the birds, birds keep coming into the tree and eating our here's another one and, uh, <laughs> so before these guys are getting totally able to ripen the birds are coming in here and chowing on them so we're going to have to get some netting over on this afternoon or we're not going to have any left and over on this one we're protecting our peaches 
with these origami bags. This one needs to start. So they're to start still covered. they're still hard. They probably got another oh, a good three weeks. They have some growing yet to do on them. I hope. Um, but you know this this tree hasn't been in the ground that long, so he's doing wonderful. And then over here we have our apron that we had showed you that we had planted in the ground uh, for you guys to see how we did that. There is one little fruit on here and we're protecting him so we can see what abrams taste like because we've never had abrams before. But look at how much he's grown, you guys. He's just beautiful. And now, here's the other garden that we had uh, built with you. See, look at this. We have these little, we thought they were lace wings but we're not sure and they just keep coming back. I can spray them down every day and they go, but they just keep coming back. On this one. What is this one? The chocolate sunflower? That's the chocolate sunflower. Uh, Look at the stem I'm, and the flower bud on that. Uh, Isn't that beautiful? And they'll come out like a deep orange and dark chocolate kind of color. Beautiful. Now we did spray this one with some organic spray. And as you can see, we don't have half the pests on this one anymore. So. I was trying not to spray you guys, I really was, and I'm gonna show you why I ended up having to spray. Um, I don't like to spray, but I can't wait till the, the stuff is totally gone before the beneficials come in. So uh, it had to be done. Okay, so Candace, can you even see in here? So right here, we have the mm, sugar baby watermelon. Here we have one of the Amish melons. There next to the Amish melon is the melons we're calling cuckoo melons. I want to see if they'll come back the way that they were last year, where they were a mix between the cucumber and the melon. I saved those seeds and I want to see if uh, we get that same uh, breed or not the same breed but the same fruit or if they go back to their original genetics. Good morning everybody. We are back this morning because yesterday remember we said that it was in the hundreds. Well it overheated Candace's phone so we had to stop recording. So we are going to finish our tour this morning and show you the things that we did during the week so you have an idea of how to preserve some of the things that you have. So instead of trying to do this on the outside, we're just going to go inside. Because as you can see, we have black netting here. Uh, this is 40% to try to shade some of the plants because they were just getting too hot. So down here we have the sugar baby. And I put flowers in the front. So we have the, uh, you can see the, this one here is climbing up the ladder. And I can't give you the name of that, that plant right now. I can't think of it. And this was the Amish melon we told you about. And this is the, you guys want to tag everything because you're not going to remember the lemon drop cucumber. No, wait. No, this is the lemon drop melon. So there's a lemon drop cucumber and a lemon drop melon. This here, I gotta turn everything around now. This is another lemon drop. This is the cucumber melon. This almost didn't make it uh, because of the sun. And this was one of the main reasons that I put up the uh, shade cloth was because he was, he just was getting too much sun for as tiny and delicate as it is. If you can believe it, this is going to go crazy and just have little tiny melons that are about that size, um, called uh, sour gherkins or cucumber melons. And then this one had died and I put new seed in. You can see that there's three of them here. I'm going to pick the best out of the three and cut the other two. Now you don't want to pull them out. You just want to cut them at the very base of the stem so that you're not disturbing the root zone and those roots can still give the nutrients to the soil. Um, but these are the cuckoo melons. 
um, from the seeds that I saved last year to see what kind of fruit we get off of that. This is a another sugar baby right here and you can see he's starting to climb up the trellis. And right here is the lufa. This one almost died. You can see where the other branch of this one died off. But he's trying to come back. <laughs> Look at that, you guys. He's trying to attach himself to the dang ground instead of there. You get those little um, climber vines and you just help them up the trellis. And then, of course, we have another sunflower here. And then we have another melon right here. I believe this is another, oh, here's the tag right here. This is a, oh, this is the Kajari. So this one had died back also, and I planted another one from seeds. So as you can see, sometimes things are just better from seed than from transplant. Now this guy, <laughs> this watermelon's going crazy. Look at him. Look at how high up he is on the thing already. Now I planted all smaller <coughs> uh, watermelons because when you're hanging them from a trellis, they can't have as much weight on them. And also I'll show you as we get the fruit and it gets bigger, how we will do netting to help them up there so that that's not too, weight, too much weight on that vine. And then here, right here, oh, these little guys right here, this is more loofah because I didn't know if that one was going to make it. So I did plant some more loofah. And this is another one of our cuckoo melons that I'm trying from the seeds that we saved last year. And up here in front, we have different types of flowers and I put in some dill. I was told that dill helps to repel uh, rodents. So I put that there, but it doesn't like the heat. So I'm not sure if it'll stay or if it's gonna try to seed or go to flower, we'll see. And then here is some more cucamelon or the sour gherkin. Um, this is the other one that, you know, I was just like, I don't know if it's going to make it. But look, he's trying to come back. He's on a slow road to recovery here. I don't know if he will or not. And then here's another watermelon. I believe this is, this might be the Wilson Sweet. No, this is a sugar baby. Right here. And then what's that one, Candace? Lemon drop. Another lemon drop. We're going to have a lot of lemon drops. Okay. And then as you can see, you guys, as Candace spans out, look at our peppers. They're just doing great in these pots. <laughs> and here is the lemon drop. Oh. This is the cucamelon that we started from seed. I really wanted to see if these were working because when I saved them, some of the seeds sank to the bottom, some of them rose to the top, and I wanted to see if any of them would germinate. They all germinated. Now I want to see what kind of fruit we get off of those, if it makes a difference where the seeds went when I cleaned them. This here is Malabar spinach, and that'll climb all the way up this trellis, and it'll be a nice purple. It's a great replacement for your spinach that you do in the fall because that holds, it's too hot. This right here, I replanted. These are Amish melons, and I'll do the same thing with these. I will wait until they get a little bit bigger, and then I will cut them back and just save one. And here is a, Scroll it. Scroll it. a flower that we put in that uh, was having a hard time climbing up because it was the, the wires were getting too hot. And this is our chocolate sunflower. Look at that. That's gonna be beautiful when it opens up. Okay, so there's our progress on our raised bed trellis garden. Very excited about that. In another month, we'll <clears throat> come back and see what it's doing. Okay, then over here, I have the basil that I had started from seed. I have two trays of that. And then we had a man give us some seed in Wyoming from peppers. Uh, peppers that he had and one of them was called a billy goat and then he had reapers so I did get three billy goats to um, germinate and I got one reaper so uh, those will be ready to get transplanted out let's go back to um, the tomatoes Okay, you 
you guys remember us planting these tomatoes? Oh, you showed them the cherries. Look at the beautiful acerola cherries or Barbados cherries. Whoop. <laughs> that one's right. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to have to net this because the birds are eating some of our cherries also. Come on, Scarlett. And back here is our Roma tomatoes. So I've been watching them and keeping them growing up into the cages. And as you can see, they're starting to flower out. So that's very exciting. They all made it and they are all just doing great. So here in a couple months, we should have some Roma tomatoes along with those peppers that are gonna start going and we should be able to make some salsa. Okay, I wanna show you guys, I mentioned yesterday why I had to do some spraying. This is really fast. So, remember how good our tomatillo was doing? <clears throat> Look at how yellow and mm -hmm. there's spots on it. I mean, they're just falling off. Oh. Okay, there's still one on here. Right there, Candace. Got it. These guys, they are eating my tree or my plant. Look at all of this. I mean, it's just, they're destroying my plant. They've eaten off 90% of the leaves. I was hoping that some beneficials were going to come in, but obviously not enough have. I don't want to take them down yet, but this isn't even the worst of it. Look at this one. It looks ravaged. This one's been totally, totally ravaged. But if I take this one down, that one won't make it because you need two to germinate. So, I don't know you guys, it's sad. This was doing so well. So we did spray it and it has made a huge difference, but I don't know if it's enough that it'll come back or not. So we'll have to see. So we're gonna walk inside now and I'm gonna show you some of the things that I was working on during the week. Okay, now we're in the kitchen and these are the things that uh, I've been working on this week. I took some before pictures that we will include, but this here is our spearmint that we dehydrated. This is regular mint and all of those are spearmint. And in the dehydrator, I have two more racks of the nasturtium flowers. And I have two racks of chives. So as you know, we already have the leeks right here that we have the three quarts of. And now I'm gonna do chives. Uh, so I'm trying to keep up on the herbs so that they're not just out there and going to waste. I'm trying to dehydrate anything that I can um, because of the certain situation that's going on in the world and it's nice just having it in your pantry. So we're gonna add chives to this also. And so, when speaking you do of this, that, your Mr. Shums, how is how is your tincture coming? The tincture's going good. Uh, we still have a good another at least three weeks. We go in and we shake the rose petals that Candace did and the nasturtium leaves that I had done, and I have already did a whole another quart of those. And I don't think I'm going to need any more nasturtium leaves. So the rest of the leaves that I had cut off that plant out there, I added to the compost to, to give that more nutrients also. Oh, and that was the other thing I wanted to show you guys today. I turned my compost and I wanted to show you the different stages. So we do have to go back outside. I want to show you really quick though. Once you um, do this, make sure your stuff is totally dry. I had my nasturtium flowers out here yesterday and I felt the stems. The flower petals themselves were dry, but the stems were not. If I would have stored those like that, thinking it was okay, it would have molded and my, my whole batch would have went bad. So I usually just pick up this whole thing. My poor kitchen really takes a hit when I'm doing this stuff. But just, I have a canning funnel right here. And you knock all that in there and you just press it in there. And then you just press it down. 
And I was trying to find some tea bags yesterday to show you what we do with some of our stuff, but you can take this spearmint, you could put it in your tea bag and you can make spearmint tea. Uh, you can add it to any kind of drink that you want or anything that you want. So we did some dehydrating of rosemary. We dried out those, you remember those nasturtium seeds that I had showed you? Uh, they were green, remember? Now look at them, they're nice and dark brown. So now they're dry, now you can store them. You don't wanna store them until they're dried out. And that took about three weeks, that took a while. Um, I did some time. That was, that's that's a job. Took because some time. They're so it took it took time, <laughs> time takes time. And here's some sage that we had left over from after we did our sage bundles. And this is oregano. You guys, this stuff smells so good. And obviously you can use all of this stuff in your cooking. And then the nasturtium and the nasturtium flowers. And then we have regular mint, the spearmint. And Candace was showing you the cherries out here. This is what we got off the tree yesterday. These kind of taste like Hawaiian punch. And they are there's so many benefits to that, but we'll go into that when we're dealing with that tree. And then I went to the farmer's market and I got this melon that I have never tried before. And it's called a chim chimay. It's called a chimay. It's a Korean melon. I took out all the seeds and cleaned out the pulp from the seeds and laid all the seeds out. You let them dry and then after they dry, you can store them. I think I have enough melons out there right now already. So I'll probably save those till next season to try but those are ready to go in a jar also. But that's how you um, do your, your uh, melon seeds. And we can do a video on that at some time also. So we're going to take you out to the compost bin. All right, we're back in the messy part of the yard. Now I've done my composting in three sections. This section here, you can see that this is gorgeous. This is completely broken down. And this is completely ready to go into the garden. It's just a nice black, you can't smell anything. It just, it's just beautiful gold. This one here is when it's almost finished, but it still needs some work. And I covered it with the brown. So there's um, the leaves in here. There's twigs in here. There's even fruit in here. Right there, some right there. Yeah, right there's an apple. <laughs> so this is where it's still breaking down, but it's almost ready. And this has kind of more of an earthy smell to it. And so will this one. You never want a rotten smell. If you have a rotten smell, your, your ratios are off. Now this one, as you can tell, it totally needs to be broken down. It is full of vegetable scraps twigs. So I will come in here and keep turning this. We had some flowers that we had gotten for Mother's Day. For Mother's Day and those are in there. Picking up with the ground. So you can see that I have the leaves on top and that will help break everything else down. Sometimes I will even add some steer manure to this um, to help it heat up and break down faster. So those are the three stages of the compost. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe. If you like the contents of what you're seeing on this channel, it helps us out and we greatly appreciate it. And we really appreciate you taking the time to spend with us. Have a great week.